Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about the primitive bryophytes, that is Rixia and Marcantia. They are together known as liverworts. Liverworts are primitive because they have thalloid body. Body is thallus like that means not differentiated into root stem or leaf like structures as it was in case of Funaria. Now the characteristic feature of bryophytes which are common that means they do not have any vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem. The body is very very primitive all the cells are parenchymatous cells. Mechanical tissue like sclerenchyma, all these structures are absent. So they also have all the characters which are of typical bryophytes. But they have thallus-like body, not differentiated into root, stem or leaf-like structure. But they do have unicellular, unbranched rhizoids. And these rhizoids, they help in absorption. That means they are functioning like roots, but they are not the true roots as vascular tissue, so hilum phloem is absent. As it is a typical bryophyte, that means moisture is required. So they grow in moist and shady places. Bryophytes are known as the amphibians of plant kingdom and the reason is the male gametes, that is the sperms, require water to swim up to the female gamete for fertilization. So there is need for water which is required for fertilization and so we call these bryophytes as the amphibians. So all liverworts, they, because they are bryophytes, they also are under the same category. Here we will talk about two examples, that is Rixia. It is written as R-I-C-C-I-A or sometimes R-I-C-I-A, Rixia, one example and the other is Marcantia. So these are two liverworts that we could be talking about. The similar things, both of them have thallus like body, both of them would have unicellular unbranched rhizoids, both of them grow in moist places. Now we will try to see certain differences also. Rixia and one more thing which is common and that is this thallus like body shows dichotomous branching. Dichotomous branching. This means every branch divides into only two. So there is bifurcation which is seen. Now in case of Rixia, the branching is such that if this is one, then there is this bifurcation. This is another branch which again has bifurcation. The next branch is going to grow like this. The next one is growing like this. That means there are layers after layers like this. So this is called the Rosset arrangement. So they show Rosset arrangement where the branches which are dichotomous, they are arranged one over, over the other in the form of a compact structure. Whereas in case of Marcantia, again it shows dichotomous branching but it is going to be a long ribbon like structure. So here it is ribbon like structure. This is one difference. The second is if we see them from dorsal and ventral side. Say this is the dorsal view and this is the ventral view that we are talking about. From dorsal side if we talk of Rixia, we find that there is a median groove which is the dorsal groove. If we see it from the ventral side, again we find there is a depression. This is the dichotomous branching and here we find this depression. And along this ventral line, there are scales. Let me draw this line with red color so that the scales can be understood. Now the scales normally are in one row but because they are present on that line, it appears as if they are divided into two rows. So some scales are going to be here, some here. So this is how the scales are. These scales
scales we have to remember that they are on the ventral side not on the dorsal side these scales are purple or violet they are violet in color and this is due to presence of anthocyanin pigment because of this anthocyanin these scales are violet bluish purplish in color now if we talk about marchantia and again we see the dorsal and the ventral view we would find on the dorsal side again because it's a ribbon like thing we would find this median line here and on the ventral side again there we would find that median line and all along this median line again there would be these purple scales so these scales are on the ventral side whether we are talking of rixia or marcantia but in case of marcantia on the dorsal side along this median line there are some cup like depressions these cup like depressions they are known as the gamma cups so this is gamma cup and in these gamma cups grow green colored buds and these buds they help in asexual reproduction and they are known as gamete so these buds are gamete and they grow in cup like or depression like structures which are known as gamma cups so this is not visible in case of rixia whereas in case of marcantia we find these gamma cups which are on the dorsal side and the same kind of scales which are found in rixia on the ventral side and on the ventral side itself we would find these unicellular unmatched rhizoids also rixia is this is the view that we get from dorsal and ventral side rixia is monoecious that means male and female sex organs on the same thallus whereas marcantia is dioecious that means there is a male thallus and there is a female thallus now if we have to draw these male and female thalli then how can we differentiate suppose i draw this male thallus here and this is the female thallus in case of marcantia so what is going to be visible so this is the branching that we see in case of the male thallus there is a vertical outgrowth here also we find a vertical outgrowth this which is on the female thallus is known as archegonophore and in case of males it is known as anthridiophore and on top of it there would be the sex organs in case of the male branch we find or in case of this male structure we find there is a central disc and around this central disc there are nine lobe like structures 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so there are nine lobe like structures and beneath every lobe there is an anthridium in case of the female one that is in case of archegonophore again this is the female one here there is a disc and there are nine radiating structures so we find these longer structures there are also nine 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so this is how we are able to differentiate in case of anthridiophore the structures the nine structures they are lobe like structures and they are very close to each other whereas in case of archegonophore there are nine slender structures which are hanging so they can be easily differentiated male thallus or female thallus and underneath these structures there would be the archegonium that means the female reproductive part 
Fertilization is through water. The male gamete is going to swim up to the female gamete and that is where the fertilization is going to take place. Now, one common thing amongst both that is Rixia and Marcantia is that the sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte which is a characteristic feature in case of bryophytes. But here the sporophyte is without foot and seta. So there is no foot and no seta. If you remember in case of funaria the sporophyte had three parts. The foot part which remains embedded in the archegonium, the seta part which is a long slender structure and at the tip there is capsule. So here foot, seta are absent so only capsule is there and capsule remains embedded in that structure. This sporophyte is going to produce spores and the spores will germinate to give rise to the gametophyte. So this is how the life cycle is going to be. That means here also we find alternation of generation. One more very important feature about Marcantia which is not seen in other bryophytes in general. That is we don't find it in Funaria or Rixia and those structures are known as elators. So these structures are elators. If you are able to recall, in case of funaria, we said that in the capsule there is a peristome and peristome has teeth. Those teeth had hygroscopic tissue which was or which were helping in dispersal of the spores. Elators are also the structures which help in dispersal. Elators are of various types but these are specialized cells which have hygroscopic tissue and they show different types of movements so that dispersal of spores can be seen. So they are found only in case of uh, Marcantia and they help in dispersal of spores. These are cells with hygroscopic uh, uh, tissue. They normally become ribbon like very long and sometimes we also find them associated with the spores. So if there is a spore which is a circular structure, we may find a thread-like elator attached to that one. So in case of funaria, there are teeth which were helping in this person. In Marcantia, there are elators. In case of Rixia, asexual reproduction is by normally fragmentation or tubers. Whereas here, it is through gamete. These are asexual buds. Sexual reproduction by formation of gametes. Male gamete is motile it is going to swim up to the female gamete that means an isogamous and oogamous type of fertilization is going to take place zygote uh, gives rise to the sporophyte sporophyte produces the spores and the spore will give rise to the gametophyte again there is alternation of generation that means gametophyte gives rise to sporophyte and sporophyte gives rise to gametophyte and the predominant stage is this thallus like gametophyte. So these are called primitive bryophytes because the body is thallus like and we take these two examples. Funaria is slightly advanced because in case of funaria we found that the body was differentiated into root stem and leaf like structures but they do not have vascular tissue that is all bryophytes and they require water for fertilization. So bryophytes are termed as the amphibians of plant. Now from the next video we will start with the other group that is pteridophytes.